So who are you? I'm Jan Kavili, and I'm a senior trainer at lynda.com. I teach Photoshop. Yeah, and it, you've been in my house before and, and uh, the la on the last version of Photoshop, and you showed me all sorts of cool things, like why you should use RAW and, and how to use Bridge and how to use the features that were back then. So I wanted to get a refresher because Adobe just came out with CS5 and has some really cool new features. And yeah. Can you give me a couple of uh, tips on what's what's uh, out in the new CS5? Oh yeah, CS5 is really cool. It has a lot of new features for photographers and some for designers as well. Um, I'm a photographer, so those are the ones that I love and I wanted to show you a couple of them. Okay. So one of the most fun features to demonstrate is content-aware fill. Yeah. Basically, what Photoshop will do is take a look at your photo and fill in places that you want to cover things up. So if you wanted to get rid of your girlfriends out of your old photos, it's pretty easy to do now. Let me show you how you would do that. Yeah, can I see? Yeah, I have some elephants, not girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not going to go there. Don't go there. <laughs> uh, this is Adobe Bridge, by the way, which is a file browsing program that comes with Photoshop. I'm going to open a photo from there by double clicking its thumbnail right there. Yeah. And now the photo is open in Photoshop. So say that I really like these elephants in the middle, but I don't like this elephant's butt over here on the right wandering out. Yeah. And I want to replace that with some trees. What I have to do is select that area that I want to replace. I'll get any of the selection tools to do that. I'm going to use the lasso tool. Yeah. Come in, and I'm just going to draw a rough selection around that part of the picture. And you don't have to be exact or anything. You just draw, draw a selection around it. That's right. You don't have to agonize over your selection. I've got a rough selection. I've included some of the background in there, just a bit. And then, here's the magic. I'm going to go up to the Edit menu and down to the Fill menu. And from there, I'm going to choose Content-Aware Fill and click OK. Nice. And in just a minute, that elephant is gone. That's awesome. Yeah, it's totally awesome. Can I try? Yeah, you do right. it. And just select right around the elephant. I don't have to be real exact about it. Right? Nope. So as long as I have the whole elephant selected inside the selection box. That's okay. right. And it's edit. Fill. Fill. It's always hard to remember that. Edit, edit. fill. That's a, and you have to just make sure it's content aware. And then hit OK. And the elephant goes away. Excellent. That's amazing. Isn't that cool? And you, you can barely tell. You can sort of tell here it's a little blurry. But you would go in and, and touch that up a little bit on a pixel by pixel basis just to make sure nobody can tell that something disappeared there. Right. If you have a little bit that you need to fix, there are some tools here. I'm not going to use them. They've been in there for a while. Yeah. The healing brush is probably one I would try, or the patch tool maybe for a larger area. Very yeah. cool. So that's, one, that's kind of the most typical use of this content-aware fill feature, but there are other uses as well. I'd like to show you one that I think people are really going to like. Okay. So I'm going to close this image, and I often end up um, in an area where I want to shoot something that's really wide, and I don't have a wide-angle lens with me, or I do, and it's just not wide enough. Yeah. So here, for example, I was driving back from uh, southern, Col southern Colorado, and I saw this really nice scene. And so in order to capture the whole thing, I tried to keep my camera really still, and I just moved slightly, overlapping multiple exposures by about, um, I don't know, 30 pixels or so, or, or a third I'd try to do. Yeah. And I went and took kind of a range of photos, just turning around, being careful uh, to have my camera on manual focus so that the focal point wasn't changing, and I also was doing manual exposure so that it wasn't auto-exposing each one differently. When I'm done, I brought those all into Photoshop, used the Photo Merge feature to automatically stitch them together into this panorama. So now the problem is that I, when Photoshop put all these photos together, it has some blank or transparent areas, and those are represented by the gray and white checkerboard there. So what would you do, Robert, when you got to this point? Well, in the old one, I would have tried to crop it or tried to play with the crop and played with the cropping lines, and, but I would have had to cut some of the image away. That's you know? right. That would cut some of the image away. So just in case people don't know what we're talking about, if I were to um, get the crop tool, which is right here, and I want to crop it so that I don't have any of those gray and white checkerboard things, I would have to lose some of the bottom, and I would have to lose some of the top over here, you know, I'm losing the sky on the left and I'm losing the ground on the right. Yeah. So that isn't a good result. 
So instead, I'm going to use Content Aware Fill to fill in those blank areas. Okay. It's pretty amazing. So here's how it goes. First, I'm going to select all the blank stuff. And the easy way to do that is to come to the layer that has transparency on it already, hold the Command key, that's the Control key on the PC, and click on the thumbnail on that layer. And that selects the photo, not the transparent parts. Right. So I go to Select and Inverse, and now the transparent areas are all selected. Now I'm going to fill those automatically with more photo by going to the Edit menu and down to Fill. And I'll choose Use Content Aware Fill again and say OK. That's just totally magic. Isn't that yeah. amazing? It's it's really cool. The, we're going to get eventually to the guys who built this feature because the way that the algorithm works to fill in these areas is really quite amazing. It is magic. And what other kinds of things do you find you use this for? Well, here's Because you can even spread things apart, you know, and all sorts of fun stuff, right? You can. The same sort of technology is used for content-aware scaling, which allows you to either squish or expand a photo and retain some things so that they don't get distorted, but move the non-important parts. And so you can, you know, change the shape of a photo. So you could make a, a, a vertical photo into a horizontal one, for example. Interesting. Another good use for this content-aware fill, though, is that if you have a person on a background and you want to move the person to a different area of the background, you select the person, you copy that selection onto its own layer, and then you have a hole behind him where you moved him out of the background. Yeah. You can fill in that back, the hole in the background Ooh. using content to wear fill. Let me show you another feature now that I think is really cool. It's called Puppet Warp. Yeah. All right, let's look at that. So here I have a photo um, that started out all as one layer. And I selected this guy, and then I jumped him up to his own layer. And, and now, and ahead. you did that using the content fill feature, so you cut him out and then filled in the background? Exactly. So. I cut him out, stuck him on his own layer, and then what was left was this ocean, but there was kind of a hole where he had been. Yeah. And so I used content aware fill to fill that. Make Very sense? Cool. Okay, but now I'm going to do something else with him. I can now move him, I can move his arms and legs into different positions using this other new feature called Puppet Warp. So I have him selected, his layer is selected. Yeah. I'm going to go up to the Edit menu, down to Puppet Warp, and I'm going to set some points on him, some of which are going to be uh, anchor points. Yeah, the so, cursor changed. You can see that. Yes, it did. Little... See, it's like a thumbtack now? Yeah. So I'm just going to click on him with that new cursor, and I'm putting anchor points where I want to keep him still. Okay. Those are like the, you know, the stick-down places. Yeah. Now I'm going to add some handles, one on each hand, one on each foot, and I can use those anchor points like this. Wow. Yeah, I can change the content of the image. Can you show me, because uh, oh, you have two anchor points that are spreading there on, the, on his foot. I do, I do. Um, can you show me the, the algorithms that are working underneath? Because you, you can show me the mesh or something like that, right? Yeah, there is okay. a mesh here. If In the options bar for the Puppet Warp, if I click Show Mesh, you can see the mesh that Photoshop is using to take that content and move it around. Wow, that's really cool. It so is amazing. In the old way, you could have done this, but you would have had to cut up everything apart 50,000 times. And I don't really... think I could have done You know, I wouldn't even want to go there. It would take hours and hours and hours. Now, this is a feature, if you're familiar with Adobe After, After Effects, which is a motion graphics program, yeah. they have had a similar feature in there for a long time. But now it's here in Photoshop. Very cool. Yeah. So now we can create some animations even. Totally create anim animated gifts and stuff like that. Yes, and this is, works not only on photographs but also with graphics, illustrations, things like that. Very cool. Want to see something else? Absolutely. All right, let's let's see something that photographers are going to love, and that is HDR Pro. Okay. Um, just a little. HDR stands for high di high dynamic range, right? right? That's right. And what the issue is is that your camera can't see as wide a range of tonal values as your eye can. So I want to be able to get detail in highlight areas and detail in shadow areas. And the camera, in many situations where there's a, a wide range of contrast, a wide range of brightness levels, can't do that. Yeah. Another good example is something that comes up all the time for landscape photographers. Yeah. And that is you're shooting with a bright sky and a darker foreground. OK, so what I have here are I have four shots of the same scene. Yeah. I, use, I have to have at least three shots to make this work. Sometimes I'll have as many as seven or nine. It just depends on how wide the dynamic range is. So here, I'll try it with four. 
what I'm going to do, first of all, is combine these four exposures and let Photoshop take the best detail from the highlights of one and the dark areas of others. Okay. And so when you do that, imagine that something is moving between the shots, it's going to cause some ghosting. Yep. And in Photoshop CS5, Adobe figured out a way to remove the ghosting, Great. which is the difficulty of HDR processing in any program. So I'm going to click on the first of these shots, yep. I'll hold the shift key and click on the last of these shots, and then I'm going to go up to the Tools menu in Adobe Bridge, and I'll choose Photoshop, and I'll go down to Merge to HDR Pro. And that's the new improved feature. Okay. Now there was an HDR Pro, or there was an HDR Merge feature in the last version of Photoshop, but it really has gotten a lot better. Yeah. It does a better job of aligning photos, it has this new ghost removal feature, and people are going to love this. The controls are more intuitive and easier to understand. That was a bit of a challenge in the past. Yeah. Now yeah. it takes a minute because it's got a lot of work to do. What it's doing is taking uh, different tones from those different photos, it's called tone mapping, and putting them all together and then aligning everything so it lines up perfectly. It's almost done. Yeah. You can see it's creating one image with multiple layers with one of those photos on each layer. Here we go. So what has happened here is we now have an image that is composed of the four images that I started with. Thumbnails of each are represented down here. And in the darker one, we had good detail in the clouds. In the brighter one, we had good detail in the foreground. Right. And it's taken all that and put it together. So what I would do over here is come over to the controls and you know basically mess with them and try to make it look even better. Um, and I'm not going to go through and explain every single control because we don't have time. Um, but if you want to learn more about that, if you go to uh, lynda.com, which is where I teach, lynda.com, and look at my Photoshop CS5 new features course, I go into each slider in detail there. So okay. you can learn. You know, but I'm just going to you know, pull a few sliders around for a minute until I like the way it looks. Whoop, that made it a little too dark. Um, and one, by the way, that I love is this detail slider, which kind of sharpens things up, crisp, crisps it up a bit. Yeah. Yep. And I usually will add a bit of vibrance, which is a way of saturating a photo without overdoing it like the saturation slider would. And by the way, if you're very sophisticated or more sophisticated in Photoshop, go to this Curves tab where you have you can adjust the curve, just like using curves yep. inside of Photoshop. We could say, spend a whole hour on curves. <laughs> say we're not going to go there, right? We're done. I like the exposure and the contrast. Yeah. Now there's something else. If you look at the clouds, there's all this kind of repetitive blurry stuff in there yeah. that is because the clouds moved across the four photos. All I have to do to fix that is go up to this checkbox, Remove Ghosts. Now it's going to take a second. Photoshop is thinking, and it has, did well, you see that? Yeah. Removed the ghosting. Dramatically different. Huge difference, and really can improve your photographs, particularly if you're someone who likes to make large prints. Yeah. It's really important. No. Now, beyond one more thing to show you, which is, let's say, well, so what happened there? If I look down here, I see that there is a green uh, highlight around this particular one of the four thumbnails. Photoshop is using that photo to do this remove ghosting. Okay. But let's say I like the position of the clouds better in this photo. I can click on this thumbnail and I can direct which photo to use for the remove ghosting. So now it's using this one. And so the clouds have moved back a bit and we still have no ghosting. Wow. Yeah. So you can really uh, decide what, where, the, where the clouds will be. Exactly. That's really cool. Yeah. Anything else? Well, there is a ton more, but I know you guys don't have all day, okay. so I'm going to leave it at that. Just to summarize, we looked at the uh, content aware fill. I showed you how to use it to get rid of content on a single layer, those elephants. Yeah. And then I showed you how to use it with the panorama, filling in those blank edges when you photo merge a large panoramic image. Very cool. And we looked at the um, content, uh, then we looked at the puppet warp. We moved the guy's arms around and HDR Pro. Now, you, did you have one more feature of noise reduction that you were going to show me? There my, is something else to show. There my photos is. had a little bit of noise in them. OK, so here I have a photo. Um, this was taken by a photographer at lynda.com. And I'm going to zoom in on that photograph so that you can see that there is a bunch of noise in there. You see that? Yeah. So there are two kinds of noise in the world. There is black and white noise called luminance noise, and that's what we're seeing a lot of right here. Then there's also color noise. And when you shoot with a digital camera, particularly at a high ISO, you're going to get a lot of color noise too. Yeah. Let's take a look and see how we can get rid of this kind of noise here in Adobe Camera Raw. I do want to make the point we're no longer in Photoshop proper because I'm now editing a raw image. 
And a raw image is one where your photo takes a picture and you get a dump of all the raw data from the sensor into your camera. Yeah. No processing in the camera like you, JPEG. You couldn't really do this with a JPEG image. Not very well because JPEG has a lot of artifacts in it. If you really zoom in, you, you can see how it's compressing the image and you don't have the complete data. Of the Correct, camera. but you can open uh, JPEGs into Adobe Camera Raw and you can try to reduce uh, noise on JPEGs too, but your camera probably will have already made an attempt at that Yeah. because it processes the image for you. When I take p pictures, I'm recording in RAW and JPEG at the same time. Mm -hmm. JPEGs are great for throwing up on Flickr or putting on Google Buzz or whatever, but you want the RAW image so you can come in and do some of this more advanced processing later on. Maybe in yeah. two years you're going to get Photoshop and you're going to learn about these techniques and you're going to want to clean up your images. Oh yeah, and it's so easy to shoot raw. Even you know, little compact cameras will do that now. Will shoot raw, and the cards are so cheap that there's no issue about storing large files because raw files are bigger. Yeah. But it doesn't matter anymore. Yep. Okay, so let's see how we can clean up this noise here in Adobe Camera Raw Six, which is the version of Camera Raw that comes with Photoshop. Um, so I'm going to go to this tab right now. We're working in this basic tab where I would do my basic exposure and contrast changes. But now I'm going to click on this tab called the Detail tab. And now in Camera Raw, I, have, I can clean up both kinds of noise, the black and white luminance noise, or the grayscale luminance noise, and the color noise. Let me drag all these sliders over to the left. So now you can really see the color noise in her face. Yeah. So what I would do is I'd come in here, drag the color slider to the right to taste until I see the noise go away. I would normally do this at 100%. I've simply zoomed into 200% so you can see it. Yeah. Um, and then if I wanted to bring more detail back, say that that got rid of some of the sharp edge here that I wanted to keep, I could increase the color detail slider to bring a little more detail back. Now I want to deal with the black, the grayscale noise is still there. I'll go to the luminance slider and drag that to the right. And look how the wow. black and white noise is going away. And I can fine tune that, fine -tune that luminance um, correction as well. If I need more detail, I can drag the detail slider to the right. If I want more contrast, drag the contrast slider to the right. And what is happening that is really good in Photoshop CS5 and Camera Raw 6 is we're getting noise, to, noise reduction without uh, changing the color. There yeah. used to be a little bit of a challenge keeping the, satur the saturation of color when you reduce noise. And we're also more able to keep the detail in the photo than before. Yeah. So now you do not need to go out and buy a separate plug-in for noise reduction, which professional photographers used to do. No, that's true. It's built it, right in. This is dramatically better. Right. So where do I learn more about where, where you do your work? Do you so, have a website and you also work for Linda? Yes, I do. Um, so I work for lynda.com and I uh, do full-time training there. I've done probably a dozen Photoshop classes in the last year, uh, Photoshop CS4 and now Photoshop, CF, Photoshop CS5. So if you want to learn new features, you'll find my course on lynda.com on the new features of Photoshop CS5 at lynda.com as well as a lot more. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. It was great.